Hello, beer lovers. I'm Phyllis Kadeo from Beers and I. And today we are at Kikuyu at 254 Brewery. And I am with Kevin right here. Kevin, say something about yourself. Hi, I'm Kelvin, one of the brewers at 254 Brewing Company. And I'm here to take you on a very expeditious tour on the brewer's side on how we make the beers. She's the beers and I'm how we make the beers. Right, so we we'll start the tour right away. Okay. Welcome to 254. It's pretty something nice. So as you see, you'll film, film around and you'll see how 254 is. Okay. So what room is this? Oh, this, this is the tap room. This is where we do our bar sessions. This is where we do our testing sessions. Okay. And also this is where we welcome the community to come and have an experience right. of craft beers. Uh -huh. yeah. So okay. basically we have a tap room. There. That's where we serve our beers, as mm -hmm. you can look over there. And then this is where our guests sit and enjoy drinks. the beers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I can see some images on this wall. So this, this is what we call our wall of, uh, it has no particular name actually, okay. but this will explain our, our involvement, mm -hmm. uh, how we have like evolved from a small group to yeah. a very bigger group, <coughs> and I will say this is more of a, our wall of loyalty, the customers that have been supporting us, oh. and also the people that like they really love the craft beer industry, yeah. something like that. So we can also end up here. Yeah. Someday. So okay. if you, you are loyal and you come here regularly, <laughs> you'll find I might end up there. Okay. Oh, this is some of our match. Yeah. Uh, we have a hood. Mm -hmm. We have. Uh, a bag, carrier bag, then we have t-shirts, we have, uh, we have uh, bags to carry cold beer, so you can carry cold beer with those bags. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, this is where I'm more conversant with, so this is where I feel more confident talking about not the other side. So this is the brew house, this is where everything goes, takes place. So we have, you know in Brin we have the hot session and then we have the cold session. So this is the hot session and basically what we do here we use our so you to make beer you need four ingredients you need uh, you need barley you need water and you need hops and then you need uh, yeast so of the four ingredients as you can have a pick over here so you see this this is barley but this barley is called malt the, re the reason being it's malted barley uh, it's a process of like uh, converting the sugars inside the barley to more simple sugars. It's a very complex, complex. Uh, it's not complex. It's just a process that happens outside the brewery. So for us, we take this barley. So according to how you mix this barley, is how you get get your beer. Uh, so the the main goal for this barley, they give us what we call sugars. To convert into alcohol plus yeah. Yeah. and then they also give us what we call beer body because you see according to how maybe the body is that's how you get the body and the mouth thing yeah. also they give us the SRA so how you play around with this body is how you get the color of the, of the beer. beer yeah so this is the first ingredient we work around with so we take it into a meal room inside there we just crush it to expose the inside 
and then when we crush it, we come and put it here in this tank. So this tank is called a mash with, mash tank. Mm -hmm. So the, the goal of this tank is to do what we call now, to, to let the enzymes convert the sugars into uh, the, the, no, into mm -hmm. alcohol. Oh, yeah. You see, what you have here is uh, heavy sugars. Oh. So you need to break them down so that they can be able to be eaten by the, by the yeast. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So this is where all that happens. Uh, so you see, it's, it's not complicated. It's just a tank with a mixture. So you crush your barley, you put it there, and then you add water. So the water is preheated. So when you add in, you, you want to like fall at uh, a range of 63, 63 degrees Celsius temperature range. So the reason for that is, uh, in this valley we have, an, uh, we have a, an enzyme called amylase. So the amylase is what converts the sugars to simple sugars. Same case with your mouth, you have amylase. They break down carbohydrates. Yeah. So then here you have starch, which is a carbohydrate. Yeah. Yeah. So it's broken down here to simple sugars. And when that process is complete, now we go to the other tank. If you crunch of the last tank over there, then where we do so that tank has what you call a first quarter. So the first quarter is kind of sibling. First bottom. First bottom. Oh, first bottom. Okay. To explain myself what I mean, what I meant by first bottom, it's you see this 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 is the tank. It has two bottoms. There's an upper one and a lower one. So the upper one is sieve like, and then the lower one is just function. So you need to separate the grains once that I showed you there with the liquid. And then now the liquid now is called what? It was it's very sweet. It's full of sugars. You see. So to separate that, you need a sieve. So the first bottom is sieve like. So you do what we call a fall uh, off. So fall off basically is uh, just circulating the hot. Just circulating the, 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 the hot. So when you circulate the, the content, what, you, that, what that does, the has from the barley or from the malt, they settle at the first bottom and they create a seed like label. Then after that, as you do more circulations, you might get clear water. And then you are now able to pump it to the other tank. Yeah, which has a chimney. So you see the other tank with a chimney, the reason being, so when you put everything there, now you can be able to do what you call a boil. Yeah. So that's what it has a chimney? Yeah, that's what it has a chimney. So that, that's where now you boil, and then that's where also you introduce your ingredient number three so basically we are dealing we initially we are dealing with two ingredients water and the grains yeah and the grains which is malt yeah yeah but to be more people call it water but, but yeah. it's malt it's malt yeah so we introduce this to no not just hops hops yeah hops, hops. Yeah. so you see as you can understand the hops are what flavors the beer they contribute to more than 80% of the beer flavors, most beers. Yeah. So, you know, you can either get your flavors from malt, from, uh, from yeast, or from hops. But most of the flavors comes from the hops. So if you drink something, it's tropical, it's luscious, that's the hops. So the hop is uh, it's a very interesting topic. Uh, which I find it difficult explaining to people in the equator because they mainly grow in the tropics. So the, the and the reason they grow in the tropics is because at their time of germination they need like 16 hours of daylight. So I just advise people to go and read more about hops. It's a cousin to cannabis sativa actually. So really? yeah, yeah, yeah. So just go and read about it. So what you get? They are their flowers. They are climbers. Climbers. Yeah. Flowers. So they climb and then they produce what we call uh, flower buds. And then those flower buds are, the, are what flavor the beers. But for us, using the flower buds, it's very tedious. We have to use a bulk of it. 
So how do you like go way around it? So there are those companies that do what you call pelletizing. So we, we get pellets, hot pellets like this one. And if you can have like you can get the aroma, the flavors. Yeah, so that's where the flavors come. So this so you don't buy the exact you don't get the exact but you get this. Yeah, we get pellets. So it can come come in two forms, either in pellet or in a, in form of an extract. So an, an extract is one that has been compressed under certain conditions to get something concentrated. Okay. So uh, this so we have three types of uh, are they three? You have three types of herbs. If I get Oops. the fourth one I'll I'll add it to from three to four. Okay. So we have what we call bittering hops. Mm -hmm. So bittering hops, what they do, they add they add now they bitter the beer, like they add bitterness to the beer. So any beer that you drink, you get most of the bitterness from the bittering hops. Okay. So that's what we add at the start of the boil. And then after that, when the boil is almost over, we add what you call flavoring hops. So okay. it's like remaining five minutes. Mm -hmm. So the flavoring hops, they, they, what they add is what you call the flavor. When you drink a beer and you're like, oh, this tastes like a mango. No, it's not mango. Yeah, it's, it's, the, flavor. it's the flavor that you get from the hops. Okay. Because mostly what you, the hops give us are oils. And the oils that they give us are what flavor the beers. And the same oils you get from hops, you can also get from fruits. Yeah, that's why like there is uh, that perception. Why is your beer so citrusy? Why you? Because of that kind of hop that has that oil that gives that citrusy kind of flavors. Mm -hmm. And then we have what you call uh, aroma hops. So the aroma hops they are basically are added at mm -hmm. a stage called whirlpool. So whirlpool is just a simple term of saying swirling. So we, we swirl the beer like it rotates. So the when you're swelling the beer to rotate, what it does one it precipitates the, the proteins to settle, mm -hmm. and then also you are able to extract the, the aromas from the hops. Now you add the hops there. Okay. And then uh, after that, now you see you've boiled your pot. Everything is sterile. It's above 80 C. You don't need now. You need to remove the from the hot session, the cold session, and you, you need to do it in a very swift manner to avoid one microbial contamination and also to avoid uh, other organisms from you know it's what it's has sugars it's like rich anything can settle in there mm -hmm. so so to to be able to assist that on that we pass the liquid in what we call a heat exchanger so the heat exchanger rapidly cools <laughs> the the water from 85C to below 30C. Yeah, and at the same time, passing through what you call a. You see the cone shaped guy over there? That's a yeast injector. That's why we inject our yeast. Oh. You see, yeast above 35C huh. dies. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So you have to make sure it passes. When it's passing, the watch is below 30C, not to 10 days. So it passes through the yeast, through the pipe, and out to the cone side. Now we can proceed to the other side. As you can see here, we have added it. three ingredients. Yeah. Now we have added the fourth ingredient. Well, trans when it when it transits here. You see over there, it's all about boiling and uh, raising the temperature. You you had about sixty three degrees C, but over here you have to maintain it uh, below twenty two C for this to ferment, unless it's a special beer which is Belgium, then they go up to 28C to produce those what you call yeast instigated flavors. So for here, if, so we, you know, beers, we have two types. Beer is the family, it has two, two branches. So there is a, I don't know if you are aware of that. Elks and lagers. Yeah, we have elves and lagers. So for the lagers, they like fermenting cold, and then the elves, they can go up to high of 28 like the Belgian else. So for us, we make two lagers and we make uh, the rest are ales. So, you know, the ale is a very, another bigger family. So you can have Belgian style, you can have uh, American style, you can have, you can have British style, and then you can have the common ones called the IPS. So the IPS are what we call Indian pellets. So 
they were discovered during uh, when the British were colonizing India. So they used to add more hops to the beer before being shipped. So when beer reached India, it was very flavorful and very, very nice. So that's where we go. The ideology of uh, IPS came about. Simply means when the beer is ready for drinking, you add more hops and let it sit. After it is ready. Yeah, after it's ready. Wow. And what you get is more flavors. One, two. The beer has a longer shelf life because the the hops have what you call a uh, Microskeptic something, more of biology. So they they preserve the beer not to go bad. Yeah. Yeah. So one question: What determines the percentage? The percentage is determined by the amount of sugars you extract on the hot side while you are mashing. You see. So if you want to have a higher percentage alcohol, you have to extract more sugars. So you have to play around with your malt grain bill. So if you wanted uh, to have maybe like you, you wanted to have like 10 percent, you'll find using more grains to get more sugar rather than using less grains. Yeah, it's more of like playing with the grains, getting more sugars. That's how you get your alcohol. Because you know an alcohol is a product of breakdown of sugars to alcohol plus CO2. Yeah. So the more the sugars, the more the alcohol. Yeah. So the reason I call this cold side, you see this, these guys, they are called fermenters. So they are temperature controlled. So everything here, like if I set this guy to 20C, shouldn't pass over there. You see? So to maintain the temperatures, you know when yeast is eating the sugars, it's a chemical term, let me not use it. Uh, what it does, it produces energy and the beer can warm up up to 40. But to prevent that, you have cooling mechanism on these tanks. So if you can have a pick over here, so you see this, this, these things are jacketed. So there are two layers. So you have the coolant coming from the bottom, getting from the top. So that, it circulating to maintain the temperature of this guy to what I've said. So when it reaches what I've set the temperature, so that valve switches off. It's called a solenoid. Yeah. So basically, like this one, this is actively fermenting. So when it's on its initial stages of fermenting, it produces CO2, which I don't want. So I let it bleed off, as you can see over here. And when it's done bleeding off, and it's done fermenting, I do what we call dry hopping. So I add my hops from the top of using a hop torpedo mm -hmm. from the bottom so the hop torpedo like to the top and then i give it three days so the the hop settle to the bottom as you can see the the fermenters are conscious so the reason being is when i dry hop when you have yeast inside mm -hmm. yeah. and you have hops and you need clear beer you see and for us, we don't filter the beers, or we don't have what we call a bright tank. So what we do, we let, we, we do what we call cold crushing, and let the everything settles. So when you cold crush, the yeast settles. So you're able to harvest the yeast to reuse for other purposes, for other beers. And also the sludge, the hop sludge also settles. So you 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 pull the sludge. There are two arms, as you can see. So one arm is like extended inside to around here. So you pull the sludge until you get clear beer coming from the one that is extended. The extended. So that's how we we, we do filtration. So that's why we, when we tell you our beer is live and natural, that's what we mean. Other other breweries will pass their beer through a filtration medium with other filtration things. And then they, they add chemicals to stop, I don't know what. As we don't do that. As we just called crush it, they just take a mixture of something and put it in the fridge and let it settle and then you have your liquid on top. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. That's how we do it.
and when we are able to call crash it now it's and it's has passed all the QC parameters you push it to the bottom line so we head to the next stage this is a bottom line so we have an eight filler and we have a four filler mm -hmm. so currently the the eight filler is not yet working so we are using the four filler uh, so basically it's just it's easy piece fill cup yeah you just fill it over here and then you cup over there and then this so you you pull beer to this tank and then this tank is pressurized mm -hmm. Is for us we use the CO2 as a source of preservative. Mm -hmm. So you, you you make sure you know beer doesn't like oxygen. So everything in any any process after beer is ready, you have to push away oxygen. So this tank is filled with oxygen with CO2 pushing away oxygen. And at the same time, after that you pull beer. When you pull beer, it's able to now to fill. And the filling involves you first patch the bottles CO2. So that removes any air. And then after that, when it's full of CO2, you now full, fill the bottles isobarically. Like fill while the pressure going back to the child. And then after that, you cup. Put the cups on, cup. Wow. It's, it's a process. So that's the whole process. Yeah. Wow. And you really do have a, a wide variety. How many bills do you have? Uh, apparently, right now we have. So these tanks hold two of our majors. Mm -hmm. and then you have another tanks. If you can go on that side, that holds another two small majors. Okay. So. Ah. That's a tough question because we keep making new beers. Yeah, because I read Mara 15, yeah. sometimes 13, sometimes that's more than that. that. That's a tough question for me. Yeah. <laughs> You'll ask the sales people how beers they are because for me, I've made, I've made more than 85 recipes. Wow. Yeah. So you see, we have different capacities. Yeah. So you see, for the more. Most selling, we put them in the bigger tanks. For, okay. for the small experimentals, we put in the smaller tanks. Yeah. And then we have, these are 1,000 capacity, and then those are 2,000 liters capacity. For the, those that are like selling, but not as quick as the 3,000 liter capacity, we put them in 2,000. Oh, okay. And then we have a, what we call regular IPS, we put them in 1,000 capacity. So if you make a beer on the 200 liter capacity and it's like uh, on high demand, we elevate it to a thousand. Yeah. And then when it's demand increases, we elevate it to 2000 and then finally to 3000. So wow. that's how we are able to craft our adventure. We, like every day, every time you are making new beers, new recipes, you're not glued to the same ideology of making common beers like what we are used to now, we, we try to experiment, we try to make new beers, mm. we try to make new recipes, we, we try to utilize local materials to make beers. Yeah. Like there is a beer that utilizes the coconut. Wow. Yeah, to make beer. Like use the madaf, the wow. water, the coconut water to make beer and see how it turns out. And there's also a beer that we utilize the beetle. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And it turned out <laughs> nicely, people loved it. Uh, I love but to that, try it. that we made more of uh, a Valentine's beer. It was very red and very tropical. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, what are the three thousand Rene cylinders like? What are your most selling beers? Most selling. So we have two which are most selling as of now. Uh -huh. We have what the Santrop. It's an IPA. Selling really nicely. It's really nice. I also like it. Yeah. Then we have uh, Nihao. It's a lager. Yeah. So you see, the two families, we have balanced out. So we have lagers for the lager lovers, and then you have yes. the sun trap yeah. for yes. the IPS and all L lovers. Or people who want to change. Yeah. So you, have, you find most people taking their lager lovers, and then they taste the sun trap, and they're like, wow. And they love L's. I don't want to turn back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hope. Uh, I believe we'll have the same experience, actually, so... What are these? Kegs? No, these are kegs. Oh. 
So, okay. you know, you can either package your beer in kegs or bottles. Yeah. Uh, unlike the notion of Kenya, where in Kenya, where people say kegs are just, it's a, it's a type of beer. No, it's not a type no, of beer. It's, it's, the it's, it's a container. Yeah. So, for, for us, we have different customers that like our beers in either form of kegs mm-hmm. or bottles. Okay. So, uh, and we have those. So, you see for the tap room, yeah. they use the kegs to dispense the beer. Yeah. And are there mini kids like Zenyonezo Ziwa Nazo? Yeah, we have. We have We only have one type of kids. Easy. Yeah, this one. Uh, they are called narrow, narrow slim kids. They hold uh, 30 liters. 30 liters. Yeah. So there are no mini kids. Yeah, there, there's no mini kids. But if you have one, you can you can come you and can fill come it. Come and buy yeah. beer from here. Yeah, we yeah. fill it for you. Okay. Yeah, we we, we are adventurous. We are open like for. Yeah, I think I would prefer having the mini keg. Nikuwa mm. na for like five liters of beer. Mm. I think yeah. that would be a good idea. That's very viable. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. The pump. So as we don't encourage use of pump because you know pump you suck air and push beer. Yeah. And as I told you, oxygen is an enemy of the beer. Yeah. So if you ever tested a beer that is oxidated, mm-hmm. it's nasty, really <laughs> nasty. So you have to use CO2. Okay. And for the fact that... That is that nitrogen too. Our, nitrogen for oh, you can use uh, nox, ni- nitrogen for what we call nitrogenated beers. For us, we made a nitrogen stout. Okay. Yeah. Wow, so guys, that's it for our 254 Brewery Tour. And we thank Kevin for taking us through. It has been amazing learning how these great beers are made. So thank you, Kevin. Welcome, most welcome. Any questions you can? You can find 254 on Instagram, on yeah. Facebook. And we'll, yeah. if you ask any questions on 254 Brewing, will definitely answer no matter how the complicate, complicated the question is yeah okay guys bye and please make sure you drink to five beers